just come my way wherever I go Hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves once again in Elysian Park, overlooking downtown Los Angeles and the Dodger Stadium. In fact, where we are right now, this is where they shot the nuclear blast scene from Terminator 2. To be more specific, we're here at a place called Elysian Fields inside Elysian Park. And we're here for a winding road that goes down the mountainside right through those palm trees right there and then off to the left. Today we're seeking out the filming locations to Meatloaf's music video, I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that. It was filmed in basically two different locations here in Los Angeles. The first one being this park, Elysian Park, the chase sequence, the very beginning of the music video. This is where P Todd, <clears throat> in his one take on the lead guitar track, oh, you want a motorcycle, huh? Okay, watch this. And he did a few knobs and just listen to him do the motorcycle and come out. It's guitar. Never stops, watch. Now here's a fun little fact about this music video. It was directed by Michael Bay and it was shot by the same guy who did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the cinematographer. Now because of this, because it's Michael Bay, this entire music video moves so quickly that you really have to pay close attention. I'm gonna do my best to try to pull some things from the music video so you can see some scene comparisons. There's a few things that you can look for. In order to get to the part of the road that could be seen clear as day in the music video, you have to head over to a place in the park known as Angel's Point. And right here is where you'll start to see the road look very familiar as the helicopter is chasing the motorcycle. The entire length of this road, there's an ankle high curb that separates you from the pavement and the drop on the other side. It goes from all the way to the top down to the bottom and that can be seen in the music video. I know it's just a curb but it is a landmark considering that well this is the where they shot the music video something you can point out. One of three things that I found and would you look at that there's a helicopter. Remember at the beginning of this video, I pointed out a hillside that had some palm trees on it. You can see the Hollywood sign off in the distance. Right now, I'm standing on that hillside. In fact, if you look closely, you can actually see in a blink of an eye, the same stretch of road twice at the very beginning with the motorcycle driving right through them and the cops and the helicopter right behind them. This is it. We know that the chase scenes were filmed here at Elysian Park, and a good part of the music video was filmed at a place called Greystone Mansion over in Beverly Hills, which is where we're gonna be heading next. But one place that I have not been able to find is where they built the crypt and the wood scene. And you can tell that the crypt was built because it's painted, it's got like scenic painting on it, and it doesn't look like an actual crypt. We thought it'd be kind of fun to start down at the bottom of the hill and go all the way up to the top to Angel's Point and retrace the steps, the chase scene from the music video. This way you can see how much of a winding road it is. Right 
again, you can point out, you can see that curb, it pretty much goes the entire length. And this is the big curb right here. We now find ourselves at Greystone Mansion in Beverly Hills where they filmed the mansion scenes to the music video. Now, Baby Ghoul, do you know the three movies that they pulled inspiration from to make this music video? I actually do know this. All right, what are um, they? Phantom of the Opera. Yep. Um, Dracula's kind of obvious. But I remember them talking about the love story in the song and they often refer to it as a kind of... Um, Beauty and the Beast love story. You are correct. Yeah. When it comes to the filming locations here at Greystone, they actually didn't do much filming inside the house. There's the banister scene and the hallway scene, but most of the filming actually took place here on the grounds and the gardens. What we're going to try to do is walk around the grounds and try to pinpoint and pick little pieces of the music video, because remember, it happens very fast, and try to line up some shots, especially using some behind the scenes footage. Probably the most recognizable part of Greystone Mansion in this music video is this fountain right here. In this scene, the girl can be sitting right next to it. It's almost like she's bathing herself and then she gets distracted by Meatloaf and his shiny necklace off in the woods. because it's one of those classic things we hear in love story fairy tales all the time that she's so beautiful you just want to give her a gift that's as beautiful as she is and thus when there's a beautiful girl bathing in your fountain you give her a gift and then he accidentally drops it and then in the very next scene she picks it up and she has a very like what is going on here i'm interested in the person who dropped this gift i will follow them into the woods the very next scene in the music video is actually not that far from the fountain. Still in the, the garden here, but on the other side of this stone wall. In fact, if you come back this way and you look off in the distance in the corner of your screen, that white lattice work, that's where Mother died in the end of Flowers in the Attic. But we're here for this wall right here. Now again, I can't stress this enough, all of these scenes happen really, really quickly. So it's kind of hard to just kind of pinpoint a part of the wall. So we actually found a behind the scenes video of Michael Bay and crew filming Meatloaf right here in this section. Now you see all these bushes, they weren't here, but this wall, and I'm gonna line it up, you can see them running along the top side of it. Action! <laughs> Beauty and the Beast is a beautiful love story. It needed to be that kind of gothic. If it was going to work, because story videos in Rockland, in a, if you're doing a story, 20% of the time they work, and 80% of the time they don't. So we were gambling big, but I was gambling on my ability to build a character. And you know what? I'm not entirely sure if Meatloaf was actually running on top of the wall or if they built some sort of scaffolding because you can kind of see a little bit of metalwork behind them. But pretty much right where Jessica is on the other side of the wall was a tree and you can see him kind of like dodge the tree and then just bolt off to the right. And then the camera pans up real quickly. And while we're here, let's take a look on the other side of the wall at that lattice work from Flowers in the Attic. A couple weeks ago, we did a video on the filming locations to the movie. And there it is again. This is your first time seeing it in person, isn't it, baby ghoul? Mother. Right? Childhood nightmares right there. Well, it started raining. But it's okay, because we finally have made it to the mansion. There's a little bit of an overhang here. And the next thing that we're going to do is try to line up some shots looking through the main entranceway here. 
which has been in all kinds of movies. But today, of course, it's meatloaf. Sadly, we can't get inside, and you guessed it, everything happens so quick that you can't really look at one thing long enough. But thankfully to some behind the scenes videos, we can pinpoint a few different things. For instance, right about there, at the top of the banister, Meatloaf can be seen up there in this shot. Even though we were doing, you know, the fast cuts that, that rock video do, but still maintain that, that character line through that video and, and run that thread. So I was relying on myself. There's also a shot of Meatloaf in makeup, which took close to two hours a day, standing right next to this banister down here, right inside the front door. My ability to build a character and make that character, you know, cohesive with the rest of the piece and make it flow as a character. When it comes to all the interiors for the music video, all of that was built on a soundstage. In fact, in the behind the scenes videos, you can see the ceiling of that soundstage. Now knowing this, I also reached out to the director of photography, Daniel Pearl, and asked him to confirm. And he said, yeah, it, it was a soundstage that they built everything on, and for good reason, because it was this massive gothic set. You couldn't tell the difference. Now, Baby Ghoul, how long did we look for this room that Meatloaf was sitting in front of the fireplace on his throne and singing? So long that by the time I looked at the clock, it was like four in the morning. We looked for hours. We scoured as much information as we could and could not find it. I mean, we were zooming in on the strangest things, frame. like finding statues. Yeah. And then whenever we found out that they actually built this set, it's pretty impressive, it like all the detail that they put in there. Yeah. Now, even though the interiors aren't real, we can pretty much look at this building and imagine where it once was because there's a shot where the girl is actually walking up to the mansion and there's a light on in the window. And that's actually on the other side, right over here to the right, Jessica, is the, the reflecting pool. Oh, I almost missed it. <laughs> but what we want is right over here. Back in 1993, there were a lot more trees on this side of the house. In fact, if you look close to the ground, you can see the stumps from whenever they chopped them all down. Now in the video, it's nighttime, and you can see the girl running through the woods towards the light. And it's that window right there. In fact, you can actually see that smaller window right down there towards the bottom, towards the ground, in the shot as well. Well, this is as close as we're going to get to the actual shot. And that's the window right there. Now, I just realized this isn't the first movie that Meatloaf was in where somebody's running towards a light in a castle or a big house. Rocky Horror Picture Show, get it? I want to point out something. Meatloaf obviously was a musician like no other, but he would be the first person to tell you that not only was he a singer, a musician, but he was also an actor. There's a, an interview where he says that every time he goes on stage or every time he writes a song, he writes it based around a character. He didn't want to be one of those people that just gets up there and sings. He wanted to create and, and, and be a character, be a movie. Each song was like a movie, which is why a lot of his songs were really long. But uh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And this, this music video, man, just tops the cake. The first time I went to play, I knew that I didn't want to walk on the stage and just play and stand there and sing. I approach singing a song exactly the same way that I would approach a character doing a play or a film. The songs do not work unless I've built a character. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time trying to seek out the filming locations to Meatloaf's music video. I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that. What is that exactly? Oh, it's a question people have been asking for many, many years, and it's got a funny story. 
Jim Steinman, the guy who wrote the song, actually took it from a Bonnie Tyler song called Getting So Excited. And whenever he wrote it, he had the feeling that nobody was going to understand what it meant. He was right. Right? Yeah. And Meatloaf was actually like, you know what, they'll get it. They'll get it. It'll be fine. Just put it in there. And Jim kept saying, no, they're not going to get it. And Meatloaf was like, no, they'll get it. How can they not? We didn't get it. Well, Meatloaf was wrong. They obviously didn't get it. To this day, it's still a topic of controversy. It is a hot topic still, yes. But supposedly yes. it's been answered because according to Meatloaf, to Meat, we'll just call him Meat, we're on a face first name basis here. Hey, Meat. Um, it's said multiple times throughout the entire song what exactly he would not do for love. According to Meatloaf, I'm sorry, Meat, because remember, we're on a first name basis, the things that he would not do for love are clearly written in the song. Okay. And there's seven of them. Okay. And I made a list. Oh, all right. So go ahead and read, starting with number one, <laughs> the things that Meatloaf, Meat, would not do for love. <laughs> They're listed thusly. <laughs> <laughs> he will not lie to you. Saw That's that a good coming. one. He will not forget the way you feel right now. <laughs> He will not forgive myself, himself, he will not forgive himself if we don't go all the way tonight. Oh man, that's a good one. I've heard that in his songs before. He will not do it better than I do it without you. <laughs> okay. He will not stop dreaming of you every night of his life. He will not see that it's time to move on. Well, that sounds sad. He will not be screwing around. That's my favorite one. He word will for not, word. Word for word. He will not be screwing around. And apparently you can take that one to the bank. But I'm going to reread one. Do it better than I do it without you. That is not something he will not do for love. Right? It's do confusing. Do it better than I do it without you. So together you do it so perfectly, he cannot do it better without you. See, Meatloaf got it, but the rest yeah. of the world did not. You might have to hear it a couple times, but those are things to live by <laughs> that you should not do for love. And with that being said, happy Halloween. It's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> It's come my way wherever I go hard luck is that it stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way